Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to trigonometry, specifically looking at these six trigonometric functions. So trigonometry, this is the study of, well, triangles, right? Try, try, makes sense. Um, and with triangles, it's amazing that if we're talking about we're going to focus on right triangles with trigonometry, um, right triangles, the, the sides always have the same ratio when we have various angle measures for those sides. So it's pretty incredible how that ends up happening. And then we have a name for when we look at the ratios of certain sides. Um, so before we get into that, let's talk about some notation that's used in trigonometry. Very frequently, we use Greek lowercase letters to represent an unknown angle measure. So very commonly, we use theta. Theta looks like this, or at least that's the best I can do. Sometimes you might also see it look like this. So that is lowercase theta. And that's the one that is very, very frequently used. Other ones that we might use are alpha. Alpha is like the little fish deal, but it also looks like the letter A, as it should. And we also use lowercase beta, which actually, oddly enough, looks like an uppercase letter B, but it does have a little tail at the bottom. Another variable that's frequently used to represent unknown angle measures is the letter T, the, the standard letter T. So not Greek. Okay, so when we're talking about um, trigonometric ratios, we can compare two different things that kind of mean the same thing. So if we're talking about a right triangle, a right triangle, the longest side is opposite the right angle and it's called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And then we have an angle measure somewhere, so I'm going to put theta down here. So we talk about the sides, there's two legs to this, and we talk about those two legs in terms of their location from theta. So the one that's opposite theta, we call opposite. And we can call it opposite side or opposite leg, usually we call it opposite side. And then this one here, is, which is right next to theta, we call the adjacent side. Adjacent is just a very fancy word that means next to, so it's going to be right next to our angle. So when we look at our trigonometric ratios, it's amazing that when we look at an acute angle of a right triangle, these ratios are always the same. They're usually pretty gross and they're usually irrational, so the good news is we use, frequently will use calculators to evaluate this or we focus on a specific set of um, angles, such as the special triangles, which is another, another time, another video. Okay, so sine on a right triangle, we know it is the uh, ratio of the opposite side length. So we say opposite side length over the hypotenuse. So that's what we call sine, and sine spelled out is S-I-N-E. So this is sine of theta. This is a function, so the function is sine, and then the, at the what we're observing is theta, which is the angle measure. So sine of theta, we abbreviate to sine theta. That's the opposite side length over the hypotenuse length. Cosine is spelled out like this. Cosine of theta is another trigonometric function, and this one looks at the ratio of the adjacent side length, adjacent side length over the hypotenuse. And it's your guess is as good as mine as to why my adjacent did not work out. Let's see if I can put it right above or it's going to be weird there too. There we go, adjacent. Those are the two main functions. Everything else can be determined based on sine or cosine. So the last one we're going to look at on this slide is tangent. This is like the other like more commonly used one. And tangent, which is spelled out tangent of theta, tangent of theta, um, we can look at it one of two ways. So one, it's the ratio of sine of theta to cosine theta, which would also mean we'd be looking at the opposite side length, which I'm getting lazy, so I'm just going to say opposite over the adjacent. Now, what happened to our denominators? Well, they canceled out because they were the same, right? If we have two denominators that are the same in a jumbo fraction, those would just cancel out, leaving us with opposite over adjacent. Uh, one of the things that you'll probably take away from trigonometry, if you've taken it previously, you already know this, if you, you probably already know this, I should say, um, otherwise we're going to talk about now, is you have to know this, right? You have to know what corresponds to what. So we frequently use the acronym or the mnemonic device, SOCATOA. So we have SOCATOA, and that's just to help us to remember the ratios. So SO, that means that sine is opposite 
over, uh, I wrote adjacent, haha, <laughs> silly me. There's obviously an H there over hypotenuse. This means cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we remember SOCATOA to help us with our right triangles for sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, that's right triangles, but we also have sine, cosine, and tangent in the coordinate plane. And when we're talking about the coordinate plane, what we can always do, now the interesting thing about the coordinate plane is um, we can have negative lengths. Side lengths, quote unquote, can be negative because we can have a negative x value or a negative y value. When we're talking about angles formed in the coordinate plane, we're usually talking about that initial side being that positive x-axis and uh, the, the vertex of the angle, uh, that's where we would put the theta is it's the one that, that corresponds at the origin. So if we have some terminal side, let's go down here, right here, and this is theta here. What we can do is we can find a point on this right here. So we want to find some point, which I'm going to call x comma y, and we can create a right triangle by going up to the x-axis. No matter where you are in the coordinate plane, you're always going to go to the x-axis. Never connect to the y-axis, it's wrong. Go to the x-axis. If you look at this triangle that formed with the x-axis, in this case the positive x-axis, and the two coordinates of that point, you would have your x value up here, and you would have your y value here, and then this would be your radius. We call it a radius because this is like some triangle is formed, um, goes through that point that is at the center Zero, that has a center of zero, zero. So those are the three things we look at uh, when we're talking about the coordinate plane. And always, 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 theta is wedged right here. It's always in between the x-axis and the terminal side. Always in between the x-axis and the terminal side. So if we're over here in quadrant two, I can't emphasize this enough, can't emphasize this enough, we would go down to the x-axis and theta is wedged in between the x-axis and the terminal side. If we're in quadrant three, even if we're really, really, well, that, we're talking like that starts the origin. Even if we're really, really close to the y-axis, it doesn't matter. You go up to the x-axis. Always, always, always go up to x. Okay, so we're going to go back to this triangle over here. And we, so we use the triangle formed because now we have a right triangle so we can use the same ratios that we used with the right triangle that we just talked about with SOCATOA. However, we call it something different in the coordinate plane. In the coordinate plane, the opposite side length is the y coordinate. The hypotenuse we actually rename as the radius. So sine of theta in the coordinate plane is the y coordinate over the radius. The y coordinate over the radius. Cosine of theta, well cosine, that's going to be the adjacent side, which is the x over the radius which is the hypotenuse. Tangent of theta, that's going to be the ratio of y over x. So what we really want to know here is that when we have an ordered pair, so when we have x comma y, x is always associated with cosine and y is associated with sine. Really important, this might be new, so we want to make sure that we understand this and we understand where these are coming from. It's because we created an acute right triangle, sorry, an acute right triangle, we created a right triangle between the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. Okay, we do have three other trigonometric ratios. These are called the inverse functions. Um, they're inverses because they are the reciprocal functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. And these go in order. So cosecant is the reciprocal. So we're going to say reciprocal, reciprocal of sine. And the way we spell cosecant is it's co secant. So this is the function cosecant of theta. Now if you look back, so on the right triangle, cosine, uh, si, excuse me, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosine would be found by taking the hypotenuse and putting it in a ratio over the opposite side length. Secant, this is the reciprocal function of cosine, reciprocal of cosine theta, and this is spelled secant of theta. And so this would be the reciprocal of adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be hypotenuse over adjacent. Adjacent. Lastly, we have 
cotangent of theta. This is going to be the reciprocal of reciprocal of tangent. Reciprocal of tan theta. This is spelled out. It's just like tangent, but it has a co in front of it. So this is cotangent of theta. So tangent was opposite over adjacent. This will be adjacent over opposite. And when we're given a triangle, we should always be given also which angle we're referring to so that we know which one is the opposite side and which one is the adjacent side. In the coordinate plane, so again, these are reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Remember, sine was y over r, so cosecant will be r over y. Secant of theta, that was the reciprocal of cosine. Um, cosine is x over r, so this is the reciprocal of that, r over x. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent was y over x, so the reciprocal would be x over y. And these, there's no fun Sokotoa shortcut. You can try, but it's hard when you have two things that start with the same letter. Um, but it's really important you know which reciprocal function belongs to which of the basic functions. This has been a video introducing you to the six trigonometric ratios.